Good evening and welcome. Tonight, again, INEC chairman says 2023 general elections may be hampered if attacks on the commission's offices continue as maldrama marks today's House of Representatives hearing on the matter. We're open for investigation. The Chief of Defence Staff, General Lockie Rabot, invites the National Human Rights Commission to probe reports by Reuters of secret abortion activity by the military in the Northeast. Iowa Consultative Forum kicks against CBN's new cash withdrawal limits, claims implementation of the policy will lead to a collapse of the nation's informal economy. On business news tonight, mobile money transfers in the country rise further by 2.1 trillion naira to 16.9 trillion naira in November. And on sports news tonight, Spain captain Sergio Busquets announces his retirement from international football as Spain crashes out from the World Cup in the round of 16. And in international news from London, the head of the Kyiv Regional Military Administration says Russia has been massively attacking Ukraine with another wave of airstrikes. As Nigerians anticipate the general elections next year, the continued attacks on the Independence National Electoral Commission's offices in parts of the country is also raising concern. ANEC Chairman Professor Mahoud Yakubu says if the attacks continue, the elections could be hampered. The ANEC boss expressed his concern during the public hearing of the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on the attacks across the country. During the hearing, mild drama played out when a representative of the Attorney General of the Federation, Yusuf Abdullahi, a deputy director in his office, made his presentation. Our correspondent Terry Kumi was there and our reports. <laughs> Since 2019, offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, across the country have been soft targets for hoodlums. This has caught the attention of Parliament, and with the general elections just around the corner, the House of Representatives has set up a committee to investigate the matter to forestall further attacks. The offices were destroyed nationwide during protests. Some of the protests have nothing to do with elections over the activities of Boko Haram or bandits or unknown gunmen. So these attacks cannot be attributed in the main to election violence. If the suspect involved belong to a particular camp, maybe the governor is in charge of that state and some of his uh, followers were arrested, you see a lot of pressure coming to us, pressure, pressure for release, for bail, for bail. Even when we deny bail, we charge to court. They go to the court and find their way and release their members. According to statistics from the Electoral Empire, from 2019 till date, 50 incidents of attacks on INEC officers have been recorded in 15 states. The breakdown shows that in 2019, eight incidents from four states were recorded. The attacks on INEC officers hit an all-time high in 2020 following the NSARS protests as 22 incidents from nine states were recorded. In 2021, 12 incidents in seven states, while 2022 has so far recorded eight incidents in five states. They are Ogun, Oshun, Imo, Eboin and Enugu states. While the INEC data attributes the incidents to hoodlums and unknown gunmen, the police say fingers point to secessionist agitators in the southeast and South South. And then the security guards that were employed as INEC are unarmed. So they... The INEC chairman is concerned that the 2023 general elections may be affected. Should such attacks continue at the pace at which they are happening at the moment, the commission may find it increasingly difficult to recover in good time for the election. If it's about stopping the attacks, yes, we can recover. But if the attacks continue, it will be very difficult uh, for the Commission to recover. Meanwhile, lawmakers are concerned that the attacks on INEC officers have continued because those arrested have not been prosecuted. They turn to the office of the Attorney General, which is saddled with the responsibility of prosecution, and are shocked by what they hear. As far as the office is concerned, we have not formally received any request for prosecution on that one. That, that is the content of our letter. But however, as soon as we receive, like all other prosecutions that are ongoing on. The prosecution that are ongoing? Yes. Uh, from which quarters did you receive the... Uh, the, the, the uh, we normally receive prosecute. reports from... Is it from we, INEC? Is it from no, no, police? DSS, is it from DSS, 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 DSS. How many? There are many. I cannot give the figure exactly, but they are ongoing. 
are these ongoing ones? Are they related to the burning of INEC offices? Of course, yes. Some of yes, them are related. Yes. So you are yes. contradicting yourself. You said you have. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to contradict. I'm just You're saying that. Like this yes. is your. Yes, submission. exactly. Yes. This is your submission. Exactly. You agree with it. Exactly. Thank you. I am further directed to inform you that the request refer above this above this office is yet to receive any communication on the investigation reports from office of the independent national electoral commission or any security agencies that investigated the alleged attacks on the Yes, yes. The electoral body on its part says it will continue to collaborate with security agencies, especially the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps, for improved protection of its facilities. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Stay with electoral violence. The Labour Party's House of Assembly candidate for Onuimo local government area in Imo State, Mr. Christopher Lego, has been killed by suspected gunmen. The Imo State Police Command spokesperson, Mike Abatam, told Channel Television that the incident happened in the early hours of today at his country home in Umucheke community. According to him, the assassin set his home ablaze after killing him. They burnt his vehicle and set other valuables ablaze. He says the Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Bardi, has ordered investigation into the incident and has activated all tactical units of the command to go after the assailants for arrest and prosecution. In other matters now, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Lucky Rabo, is asking the National Human Rights Commission to investigate the allegation by international news agency Reuters that the Nigerian Armed Forces is championing a secret abortion program in the Northeast. General Rabo threw the challenge when he led some senior military officers to the headquarters of the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja. He says the military has nothing to hide and is open to any investigation that will unravel the truth in the matter. We, as an armed force, stand ready for any establishment, and I think in this case, the National Human Rights Commission stands a good ground to carry out an investigation. And if that will be what you decide to do, I wish to use this opportunity to assure you of an unfettered access that we grant you unfettered access to all our establishments across not just the northeast but across the country <laughs> our doors will be open to you as you so desire on the course of any investigation that you may want to conduct and to also assure you that if you desire to invite any of our officers, that it will be available to, for you to also ask them questions that you think that are appropriate in the light of the allegations that have been given. We're doing this because we believe we have remained very transparent in our operational engagements and so we have nothing to fear. We have also indicated before now that our report is evil. The debate arising from the announcement of the cash withdrawal limits by the Central Bank of Nigeria continues. This time, the Arawa Consultative Forum has picked hole in the policy. The policy restricts individual cash withdrawal from commercial banks to 20,000 naira per day and 100,000 naira per week, and also 500,000 naira per week in the case of corporate bodies. Reacting to the developments in a statement, the ACF warns of the insistence of the CBN on implementing the policy will lead to catastrophic collapse of the informal sector of the economy, especially considering the fact that transactions in commodity markets, particularly in the rural areas, are entirely cash-based. A group calls on the CBN to enforce strict regulations to protect people's money and inform, encourage, and prepare the public adequately 
for the transition. It maintains that the unit, the, until the CBN is able to address the challenges substantially, a sudden implementation of a cashless payment system, no matter how well intentioned, will create more crisis. Well, back to politics. In Abia State, the governorship candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Alex Oti, has continued his campaign tour with a visit to the palace of the traditional ruler of Ngbili, ancient kingdom in Indoki community of Ukwa East local government area. The Labour Party candidate's visit was to seek the blessing of the monarch. He used the opportunity to restate his promise of fixing the many challenges bedeviling the state. <laughs> Labour Party candidate in Abia State, Alex Oti, arrives in Bele Kingdom Palace in Ndoki community of Abia State. He's here for a consultation meeting with Ndoki Council of Traditional Rulers, headed by its chairman, Tony Wagbara. The aim of the meeting is to underscore the importance of the role traditional institutions play in social cohesion. He assures the monarchs that if elected in 2023, his administration will transform Abia State and fix the infrastructure deficit. The cost of governance in the state, just like it is in the country, is irresponsibly high. And it behooves some people who know what to do to bring it down so that there will be money to do the right things, the things that governments have got to do, which is Look after the welfare of the people, give them an enabling environment for their businesses to thrive. Speaking on behalf of the monarchs, Tony Wagwara stresses that their support is not for political parties, but for competence. And they're impressed with Alex Oti's dossier. My colleagues have spoken boldly. My colleagues have spoken boldly that we are not in the era of supporting political party, but in the era of competence, character, and performance. After taking a critical look at your dossier, my colleagues and I are highly impressed and optimistic that our palm plantation, Abia Palm, and entire community landscape will be totally transformed. And Obinemen Poly Poly, because Abia Palm, Abia Palm, yeah. protecting against enemies. No, no, no. Therefore, the Council of Traditional Rulers give Oti a royal blessing, praying for his success in the forthcoming 2023 governorship election. <laughs> the campaign train then proceeds to the Labour Party Secretariat, Nobohian Doki, Bukwa East local government area, where Mr. Oti meets with party officials and supporters. <laughs> to the Obohia Civic Center for a town hall meeting to rule voters ahead of the 2023 election. Speaking to journalists, the Labour Party candidate for Ukwa East Assembly seat, Adele Ekeke, said Alex Oti is the best man for the job. Dr. Alex Oti is going to be the best. Dr. Alex Oti is going to clean all the tears from Abia pensioners, all the tears from the Abia workers, the, 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 the tears from the doors, the, the students. Ahead of the 2023 polls, the Alex Oti Campaign Council promises to take their campaign to all nukes and crannies of Abia State, hoping that the electorate will buy into his agenda. In part two after the break, residents of Kaduna lament scarcity of fuel, plead with the NNPC Limited to take urgent action to address the difficulty in purchasing the product. That's in a moment. Please join us again. With this squad up, I think my customers will understand that it's my own POS. No, we will no go Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live from Channels Television, Lagos. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Again, INEC chairman says 2023 general elections may be hampered if attacks on the commission's offices continue, as mild drama marks today's House of Representatives hearing on the matter.
We're open for investigation. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Rebel, invites the National Human Rights Commission to probe report by Reuters of secret abortion activity by the military in the Northeast. Iowa Consultative Forum kicks against TBN's new cash withdrawal limits, claims implementation of the policy will lead to a collapse of the nation's informal economy. It's by the 48-hour ultimatum issued by the Department of State Services to the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and all marketers to make petrol available to Nigerians across the country the lingering scarcity of PMS is biting harder in many parts. Just a few days to the Christmas celebration, the price of PMS in Kaduna State has risen as high as 310 naira per litre. Residents are therefore appealing to the NNPC Limited to urgently address the situation. The lingering relative scarcity of premium motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol, has assumed a disturbing dimension detrimental to the socioeconomic situation and security of the country. This is because in what seemed to have started as a partial scarcity months ago, is now tailing towards a major economic crisis with what appears to be an irreversible price hike. In Kaduna, most filling stations owned by major marketers say they have been out of stock for a while and a few ones where the product are selling above the government approved pump price of 185 naira per litre, with many of the outlets selling between 255 naira to 310 naira per litre. I got the foil at 270, 270, it's not easy, 270, before you know it, and the, the money is not there, you have to manage it, you have to drive the car, it's necessary. Getting fuel now is a problem. Why is it a problem? First, you have your money. You have your money to get the fuel is a challenge. And you get it at the rate of uh, 305 naira. Some village agents, they sell it anyhow they want to sell it, and you cannot ask them. For the filling stations that are selling at the approved pump price, motorists spend hours in queues to get the product. When it comes to yeah, this commodity, fuel, it has been very, very, very bad for us. You can see we are here since 6 a.m. And up till now, they just start selling. Though this filling station is, is even better because when you are on queue, you are sure of getting. They follow things adequately and the way if you are patient, you will get your fuel. But other filling stations are not even like this. I used to buy 310 in some places, but today I bought 185. If the government can help the pharmacy to be getting it, you see it like this. Okay. Some industry players attribute the situation to the deplorable state of roads across the country, among others. You know, most of our roads, they are bad. Most of our trucks spend almost four to five days on the, on the road. And our roads by contribute to most of the scarcity too. If you look at it, most of the station in, uh, in Abuja, there is a special intervention by the federal government or by NAPC as a, as a body. And um, I also want NAPC to transfer that particular aggressive intervention to most of the markets out in Kaduna State. And uh, I'm sure at the end of the day, we'll dilute the crisis of work here in Kaduna State. Apparently, if nothing is done to curb the hike in the price of petrol and make it readily available, this Yuletide may be laced with whalings. Meanwhile, the leadership of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association is recommending the privatization of the nation's refineries as a long-term solution to the country's recurring fuel scarcity problem. President of Pangasin, Mr. Fesos Isivo, told journalists on the sidelines of the association's meeting in Abuja that the Nigeria, liquefied the Nigeria natural liquefied gas privatization model is the way to go as it allows the government to hold minority shares. He's also asking government agencies to, responsible for regulating the prices of petroleum products to be alive to their responsibilities. The short-term solution today is that we cannot just wake up today and say the refinery must work today. Practically, it will not be possible. Uh, but we are importing this product. Why are these products not available? Why is it that NMPC will sell to the major marketers, to the depot owners, at 148 Naira 17 Kobo? But these depot owners will end up selling to the retailers close to 200 Naira. 
and we are expecting the retailers to sell in the government approved price so clearly it's not going to work so the first thing for us is that we have regulators in the downstream sector the nigerian uh, midstream and downstream uh, Petro uh, petroleum authority so nmdpra so they must come up to do everything possible to get the product out there and to ensure that there is compliance, to ensure that when NPC sells to the major marketers and depot owners, the depot owners should not overtly charge the retailers. Today, we can attest that if you go to Portaco Refinery, there is a lot of work going on there. If you go to Wally Refinery, they are just about starting at all. So once they, once they fix the refineries, we will be at the vanguard to champion that these refineries should be privatized not at right sales government should own minimum of between 45 to 49 percent and the private sector should be the driver just as it is in nlng Whether you're tired already or upon us, the road safety concerns are heightened. And as part of efforts to ensure free flow of traffic during this season, a Federal Road Safety Corps is asking motorists to obey traffic regulations at all times. Speaking at the Suleja axis of the Abuja Kaduna Highway, the acting Corps Marshal, Mr. Dauda Biu, attributes the gridlock of the Abuja Kaduna Highway and some other major highways in the country to the impatience of motorists. He says more personnel would be deployed throughout the country to maintain sanity on the highways. For hours, motorists plying the Abuja Kaduna Highway remain stranded as vehicle movement comes to standstill along the Suleja axis of the Abuja Kaduna Highway. The arrival of patrol teams led by the acting corps marshal of the Federal Safety Corps brings some respite to the motorists. The road connects the Federal Capital Territory to the Northwest region through Niger and Kaduna states. The road is notorious for heavy traffic, especially at weekends when many residents from the nation's capital are traveling to spend the weekend with their loved ones. Nevertheless, the Federal Safety Corps blames the situation on motorists. I want to appeal to our motorists to be patient on the road. Uh, there is no need to hurry because they took opposite direction and they got stuck. All of them got stuck. Nobody is moving again. So what is the essence of doing the traffic, uh, traffic road violation? So I want to appeal to them that uh, they should avoid this type of driving attitude so that everybody can get to his destination within the, the very, uh, within the possible uh, short time. This campaign by the FRSC is part of efforts to reduce road crashes during the Utah season. And the Corps is deploying officers to monitor major roads across the country to ensure the smooth flow of vehicles. The Corps Marshal takes his time to distance the Corps from accusations of motorists who blame them for being responsible for some accidents on the nation's highways. You expect this uh, type of things because uh, when you say high handers, you can see the attitude today. You can see what happened. So what do you expect our men to do? So I don't even know, understand uh, the concept of that high handedness. Is it that they are stopping them from doing the rock thing or what? So there is nothing like uh, high-handedness. Our men are just doing their work. Although the court marshal promised to release the statistics of crashes soon, he expresses optimism that the rate of fatal accidents is on a downward trend. Meanwhile, the federal government has declared December 26th and the 27th, as well as January 2nd, 2023, as public holidays to make the Christmas, uh, to mark the Christmas and New Year celebrations. This was announced by the Minister of Interior, Mr. Rauf Arabashala, in a statement signed by the Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Belgor Schweib, today. A public holidays are to mark the Christmas, Boxing and New Year Day in that order. Mr. Arabashala urged Christians to emulate Jesus Christ and reflect on his teachings as they celebrate. We're in Ogun State now, where Governor Dakwa Biodung has continued his infrastructure drive with the commissioning of the 4.5 kilometer Molusi College Road in Ijabu, Ijabu North local government area of the state. The governor said construction of the road was as per the people's choice and a demonstration of his administration's inclusive governance style. 
the transformation of the Molusi College Road from a death trap to motorist delight is a plus for the Ogun State Government. The category of guests at this commissioning ceremony speaks volume of the importance the Jabu Igbo residents attach to the infrastructure. In his opening remarks, the Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Engineer Ade Akinsoya, says the construction of the Molusi College Road comes with a lot of social economic benefits. This particular road and all the other roads improve the economy, the health of the residents. In this particular area, the rumor is for more business is doing better than before now. Among those who delivered goodwill messages were prominent leaders from across the state who commended Governor Dapo Abiodun for his leadership style. As from next year, you will enter the saddle again for another set of uh, developments. And we all agree that with what we have started, you will not uh, diminish the status of what you have been done for Ogun State. I have no doubt in my mind that um, what he is doing all over Ijebu land, which has been eluding us for a while, is making all of us very happy. I cannot say much because I am still a PDP member. But this forthcoming election is not going to be about political parties. It is going to be about the character Governor Abiodun reaffirmed this administration's commitment to ensuring an even spread of infrastructure across the states. We will not stop until every school in Ogun State is totally rehabilitated or reconstructed. Our primary health care centers as well, our plan is to have 236 representing our 236 wards. So each and every individual can simply walk to a PHC. Today we've built over 1,300 houses in three and a half years, and we are still building. With over 400 kilometers of road constructed or rehabilitated across the state within the first three and a half years of office, Prince Dako Abiodun appears confident that the people will give him an opportunity to return to office for a second term. Still ahead on the news at 10, mobile money transfers rise further by 2.1 trillion naira to 16.9 trillion naira in November. We'll have details of business news to join us again. Welcome back to some company news now. Amidst uncertainties in the crude oil market, the Independent Petroleum Producers Group has been discussing and evaluating the successes recorded as well as challenges in the sector in the past years. According to the group, it's imperative for all players in the sector to come together and chart a way forward to thrive. Members addressed these issues during the group's annual dinner in Lagos. It's a gathering of executives, friends, and business owners in the oil producing sector at the Independent Petroleum Producers Group annual dinner in Lagos. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The keynote speaker is the CEO of GT Co, Shegun Agbaje, who speaks on industry trends within the petroleum sector. From a banking perspective, we never look at your sector as one. We always break your sector into three. We break it into upstream, midstream, and downstream. And we do it for a reason. For us, the risks are very different, and so we kind of create mitigants that are unique to each sector. The event serves as a platform to dialogue on the challenges and successes in oil production. Both agencies uh, which were created as a result of the PIA have now started developing the regulations for implementation of the act itself. And that requires an extensive amount of engagement by us, the IPPG, with these regulators as, as, uh, as the law is being implemented. It also seeks to design modules that will enable petroleum producers in Nigeria maximize profits while ensuring the availability of petroleum products for consumers. 
we all want to do well, we want to prosper, we want to be successful, we want to do things properly. We want to make sure that the Nigerian industry remains vibrant and it, has, it continues to contribute to the economic uh, mainstay of Nigeria. For these players in the petroleum sector, building synergy between government and the private sector will aid in curbing the present issues facing the petroleum sector in the country. I believe that in a couple of years' time, they will take the center stage and perhaps uh, the IOCs will take the backstage when it comes to exploration and exploitation of hydrocarbon in Nigeria. Ideas exchanged by these stakeholders at this dinner may go a long way to help petroleum producers in the country shaping activities in the oil industry going forward. Globalcom has once again fulfilled its promise of putting smiles on faces of its subscribers this Yuletide. The telecommunications brand, through its Festival of Joy promotion, has presented a three-bedroom bungalow to another young Nigerian, Ibrahim Ayoliki, making him a landlord. Ayoliki is one out of 20 loyal subscribers who will benefit from the promotion. This three-bedroom bungalow in Fulan Court Estate 2 in Awoyaya, Lagos, is ready to be presented to one lucky Globacom subscriber. And this ceremony is for the official presentation to him. Globacom, through its promo, Festival of Joy, has been spreading joy among families by rewarding loyal subscribers with different amazing prizes but in a smile on faces this Yuletide. This is the fifth house presentation since the promotion began. Our commitment to the total well-being of our subscribers and the realization that shelter is one of the key needs in life throughout our desire to help some of them own houses of their own through this promotion. The latest winner, Ibrahim Ayoliki, who was only informed the night before this handover, just gained admission into the University of Illoring to study accounting. He is quite emotional about the good news and says this is happening a year after he was scammed by an agent. As at this time last year, I got scammed to buy some boy at Selen. But when they call this year, I was not like, is here really? And they want to keep me on that, okay, when they call, I was like, I can't spawn, they should give it to another person. So they called, 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 called. The man had text me on WhatsApp that, Mr. Ibrahim, you want a house, truly. The executive chairman of the Leki local government area applauds Globacom for this reward promotion. Reward promotion of this nature, done on a continuous basis by Globacom, demonstrate an abiding corporate culture of customer centricity and unyielding commitment to enhance the overall customer experience for its subscribers. I rejoice with today's prize winner. What an amazing way to end the year. More house presentations will be held in more locations across the country. As Globacom says, it remains committed to making more loyal subscribers, landlords and landladies through Glow Festival of Joy promo. As hoping Will Ebong has some good news in business news. Thanks, Amarachi. A total of 2.1 trillion naira has been transferred over mobile by bank customers in November, the highest monthly record so far in the country. Now, according to data from the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, NIPS, the November figure brings the total mobile inter-scheme transactions on the NIPS platform to 16.9 trillion naira in the last 11 months. The NIPS data showed that the value of mobile transactions has grown year on year by 148% in the last 11 months of this year, compared to the 6.8 trillion naira recorded in the same period last year. Now, Delta State Governor Senator Ifai Okoa has signed into law the state's 2023 appropriation bill of 571.64 billion naira. The last budget he signs as governor of Delta State. Governor Okoa will sign the budget that comprised 235.5 billion naira.
for recurrent expenditure and 336.1 billion naira capital expenditure also assented to nine other bills and insists its administration will continue to be functional until May the 28th next year. As a government, working with our tiers of government and with our people that will have delivered the dividends of democracy and will continue to stay focused, as I have always said, working through until the last day of this administration on the May 28th. We will remain functional, we will continue to do what we ought to do, we will continue to deliver our projects, we will continue to impact on the life of our people, we will continue to encourage our youths, the several thousands and even many more, to get entrepreneurial trainings and to give them show that they have startup paths that will enable them to become business owners of their own. Now, outside of our shores, the European Union has adopted a plan for a global minimum 15% tax on big business. This after months of political wrangling. The landmark deal between nearly 140 countries aims to stop governments racing to cut taxes in a bid to attract companies. According to U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, the historic agreement will help to even the playing field, and the newly approved plan was drawn up under the guidance of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and already had the backing of Washington and several major EU economies. However, the implementation of the minimum tax in the 27-nation trading bloc was delayed due to objections by some member states. Back home, the equities market ended the final trading session on a positive note, snapping four days of gains for the week. Here's Laddy Williams with the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report, and we end the second full week in December in the green. Good move there. Look at the all share index, 0.17%, continuing the bullish trend we had yesterday, 49,316. That's 316 points deeper into the 49K level. Looks like the 50K level is in sight uh, right now. Market cap, 26.86 uh, trillion now. Let's look at the activity chart. We see it's uh, subdued buying pressure today. Volume, 103 million units of stocks valued at 2 billion now. Uh, Less than what we had yesterday, showing subdued uh, buying pressure. Let's look at the top gainers counter now. UPDC topping that counter up 10%. See PZ there, 12 Naira 40 cover. Also, see Thomas Wyatt there, natural resources uh, sector, that's up 9.62%. Let's look at the losers counter. See Academy Press topping that counter. And Honeywell Flower, 2 Naira 12 cover, down 3.64%. And the financial services sector takes a shine today with GTCO, uh, Zenit Bank, leading 16 gainers against 11 decliners. Definitely a positive week. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Ladi Williams. It's back to you. And that's a wrap on Business News. It's back to Amarachi for the rest of the news at 10. Thanks a lot, Will. The remains of Vamishe Ayungwala, a lady who was found dead after boarding a bus belonging to the Bus Rabbit Transport Scheme in February, have been committed to Mother Earth. She was said to have been raped and killed allegedly by the driver of the bus, Andrew Ominikoron, who is currently facing trial over the matter. She was buried amid tears at the Aton Cemetery in Yaba area of Lagos. That event was a solemn moment for the family and her friends as they paid tribute to the 22-year-old fashion designer. We are laying her to rest today, but her love is still right in our hearts. Look at all the children that Bamishi was caring for. She was actually coming to welcome my own son into this world, and they cut short her life. We thank God that she did what many people will not do. So, we bless God that uh, we are able to lay her to rest today. Ah, well, the just, uh, pursuit for justice continues. So, if you uh, want to know, by 23rd of next month, January, we are going to the court again 
now that we have laid out to rest, our concentration will now be on ensuring justice, pursuing it vigorously. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family at this time. Now, authorities in Ukraine say Russian forces fired 76 missiles and carried out drone attacks from across the country at strike at the capital, Kyiv, and cities in the north. As many as nine power generation facilities were hit, prompting widespread outage. Some of UC has more on this story and others in around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The head of the Kyiv Regional Military Administration says Russia has been massively attacking Ukraine with another wave of airstrikes. About nine power stations have been hit across the country, says the country's energy minister, and the city's mayor says the whole of Kharkiv is without power. An official said 37 out of 40 missiles fired on Kyiv had been shot down, although water supplies in the capital have been affected and metro services are suspended. Russia has been targeting the Ukrainian energy grid as winter temperatures plummet, with as many as 70 missiles reportedly fired at energy facilities this morning. Our anti-missile system works quite well, but due to the high quantity of cruise missiles um, shot by Russian Federation, launched by Russian Federation, we still face uh, some difficulties. Unfortunately, we have already received information that uh, some uh, cities are already cut off of the electricity. Ukrainians have kept up morale while sheltering from attacks by singing in underground stations. Residents took cover in the metro on Friday as Russia launched missile attacks on Ukraine's infrastructure. People singing renditions of Ukrainian folk songs and some even dancing on the platform to lift their spirits. However, despite the high morale, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said that further strikes on Ukraine's infrastructure could lead to a serious deterioration of the humanitarian situation. Missile strikes on civilian infrastructure, including energy facilities and hydroelectric power stations, are exposing millions of civilians, especially persons in situations of vulnerability, to extreme hardship during the winter months. At least 21 people, including children, have been killed after a landslide hit a holiday campsite in Malaysia's Selangor state. Families were sleeping in their tents when the landslide happened around 3 a.m. on Friday morning at a farm stay in Batang Kali Township. Hundreds of rescuers spent Friday digging through mud to find survivors. The farm's manager said at least 30 children and 51 adults were registered for an overnight stay. Malaysian authorities say 14 people were still missing. A giant aquarium containing a million litres of water in the lobby of the Radisson Blue in Berlin has burst, flooding the hotel and nearby streets. The Aquadom was home to one and a half thousand tropical fish and was 46 feet high and was described as the largest freestanding cylindrical aquarium in the world. My God. Video showed an empty tank with water pouring into the lobby and debris strewn everywhere. Police said there had been incredible damage, with two people injured by glass. Guests have been moved out of the hotel following the incident, and the road outside closed. Thousands of demonstrators have taken to the streets of Brussels to protest against the rising cost of living, hitting public transport systems and disrupting this week's EU summit. Brussels police said 16,500 people had turned up at the demonstration, which was organised by trade unions representing public sector workers. Gas and electricity prices have surged in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Two opposition Senegalese MPs have been arrested for the alleged assault of their pregnant colleague in Parliament earlier this month. It follows the chaos that erupted during a budget debate in Parliament in scenes that were televised. Masata Sam is said to have slapped the female MP Amy and Dai Nibi after she scoffed at him during the debate. And the world's best disabled surfers are battling it out for the top prize in the Canary Islands. Riding waves at Las Canteras Beach in Gran Canaria, 
Competitors are starring in the Open LPA Surf City 2022 Championship, which runs from December the 15th to the 18th. Known as adaptive surfing, people with disabilities adapt their techniques and equipment to be able to practice the sport. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Welcome to the world of sports. We begin with Spain captain Sergio Busquets, who has announced his retirement from international football after La Furia Rogers' exit from World Cup in the last 16 in a penalty shootout defeat to Morocco. The 34-year-old Barcelona midfielder was part of the Spain team that won the 2010 World Cup in South Africa under then coach Vincente Del Bosque and was also part of the squad that won the European Championship two years later. Busquets made 143 appearances for the national team after making his debut in 2009 in a 2-1 win away to Turkey with only Sergio Ramos and Ike Casillas having played more games. Now, several French players have caught cold as they prepare for the World Cup final against Argentina with Rafael Varane and Ibrahima Konate the latest to fall ill. Centre-back Dayot Upamecano and midfielder Adrian Rabiot missed Wednesday's 2-0 semi-final win over Morocco with the illness. Coach Didier Deschamps has refused to panic after Wednesday's game, insisting that they were being careful to ensure the illness did not spread. If the situation does not change, Deschamps would face a difficult selection decision for the final. Now, Croatia is preparing for a huge match against Morocco in Saturday's World Cup third place playoff with the African team's surprise run to the semi-finals reminiscent of Croatia's own success at the 2018 tournament. Croatia fell short of a stunning second straight run to the World Cup final this week, while ultimate underdogs Morocco also ran out of magic in the semi-finals. Croatia and Morocco had drawn goalless in the group stage before both advanced to the knockout stages of the competition. Now the 2025 Club World Cup will feature 32 teams, making the format similar to the ongoing Soccer World Cup, the ongoing Soccer World Cup. FIFA President Gianni Infantino says the tournament, which currently involves seven teams, would be held every four years and would boost revenues for the global sports body further. Currently, the top teams of every continental competition, as well as the host's national champion, battle it out for the Club World Cup title. The new men's club world cup will therefore take place in 2025 and will feature 32 teams the best teams in the world of course the details of the location and so on still need to be discussed agreed and decided but the 32 team tournament will uh, go ahead making it really like a world cup like this world cup with 32 um, teams when it comes to the international match calendar uh, the principle of having the two windows of uh, September and October merged to have four matches instead of two in September and two in October, four matches end of September, beginning of October, and for the rest remaining the same. And again, what we have seen in this particular World Cup, uh, the importance of having matches between national teams of different countries, of different continents, sorry, uh, happening more regularly more often and the idea there uh, and the principle that was agreed again details to be elaborated is to use the march windows um, the 10 days in march in the even years so the world cup years and the copa america or euro years um, to organize uh, friendly tournaments between four teams of four different confederations so that they can gain everyone can gain this experience in playing with each other under, of course, the umbrella of FIFA, so FIFA World Series type of um, events to allow more matches between teams of different um, confederations. And on a sad note, Serbian legend Senisa Mihalovic has died at the age of 53 after a bout with leukemia. Mihalovic played for numerous clubs in Italy and competed in the 1998 World Cup and 2000 European Championships for the former Yugoslavia. 
He later became a coach, largely in Syria R, and most recently with Bologna, where he was working when he was diagnosed with leukemia just before the 2019-2020 season. And that's where we wrap it up on Sports News. I'm Victor Mathias. Thank you for watching. It's back to Omarachi with the wrap of the news at 10. Some young persons from Aquibum State. One from each of the. It is the season to be merry, and we'll be seeing more holy nights uh, over the next few days leading up to Christmas. In Aquibum State, in Nigeria's South South, uh, the state already in the mood with music and dancing at the ongoing annual Aquibum Carols Festival with fireworks as well. It's a celebration of Christmas melodies and some other hymns and contemporary praise songs. They has last state carol festival in office the host governor Udom Emmanuel set the tone for the evening banging on a bass drum before different choral groups and solo acts gradually up the tempo of the evening setting the guests including the VIPs in attendance in the mood amazing and very interesting uh, Merry Christmas to everyone I guess and the main news again INEC chairman said the 2023 general elections may be hampered if attacks on the commission's offices continue even as maldrama played out today at the House of Representatives hearing on the matter the Chief of Defence Staff, General Lucky Rebel, has invited the National Human Rights Commission to probe the report by Reuters of secret abortion activity by the military in the North East and that's it on the news of 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubani. Good night.